This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea. I'm Mark Schwab, the host of this program. The original Polynesian people came across the sea to the Hawaiian Islands hundreds of years ago. How do we trace those origins and family lines? How significant is this history to the present-day Native Hawaiian? My guests today are Kali Hannes and Manny Matos. Kali is a manager of historical data and knowledge at OHA, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Manny is a craftsman of traditional Hawaiian weapons with a personal interest in Hawaiian genealogy. Today we're going to talk about the importance of the past to the present and the future and how Hawaiian history is preserved and empowers Native Hawaiians. Aloha, gentlemen. Aloha. Aloha, Mark. Good to have you here. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you both. Uh, Manny, let me start a little bit with you because I know you, you want to talk about this. <laughs> First of all, aloha what, for inviting me back. <laughs> uh, good, good, good to have you. What, what is the importance of Hawaiian genealogy to you personally? Tell me a little bit about your own, your own feelings about it. And then I, I want Kali to talk a little bit about what it means for the past. Well, as far as Native Hawaiian genealogy, for me, is because my wife is Native Hawaiian. And uh, her family was born and raised in Wonolua. And uh, I found that uh, there really is a gap or a kind of a, a lack of interest in their genealogy. Uh, so I did some inquiring and investigating and I found they have a lot of information, you know, uh, different uh, genealogical background. But two things, they don't know how to gather that information or to do research on it. And secondly is to talk about it. They, we have about three of the older generations, one is 86, one is 85. and. Uh, they don't have the interest, you know. Uh, I don't think they realize how important it is for their generations. So I began investigating, and I also have a lot of questions for Kali here. And so that's how it affects me as well, from a Hawaiian Let's side ask Kali now. Kali, what is the background of Hawaiian genealogy study, and what, what's the importance of it, and what's the well, meaning for it? And bring it forward to us a little there, bit. There's always a saying, you have to know where you come from before you move forward. Yeah. You know, I, there's a, actually a Hawaiian saying that says, my ka'iki kalo i ka oha, right? So that means if the, the stem of the kalo is really is good, then it's going to grow into a good kalo. So that's, mm -hmm. if the parents are good, if the generations before are good and have been able to perpetuate not only traditional practices, but, you know, just just being a good person, showing the good aloha, mm. being a good, respectful person of Hawaii, then, you know, hopefully that will pass down to the generations. I also can um, really relate to you, Uncle, because <laughs> I, asked, I used to ask my tutu all the time, they say, oh, tell me about life in Kohala, uh -huh. you know, and she would say, oh, that's something we don't, we never talked about, right, yeah? Right, right. Say, oh, I want to know about my great-grandfather, you know, great-great-grandmother, and they said, that's something we never talked about, so... Really, with so much information available nowadays um, through internet, through the digitization of uh, health records um, and different legal documents, you know, a lot of that information has become readily accessible through the state archives, through the Bishop Museum. And actually, at OHA, we've been doing a lot of work with our Papakilo database in making Hawaiian newspapers accessible, as well as um, the Mahele records, which is documents the privatization of land, of course, in mm -hmm. the 1850s. And that has a lot to do with lawyers, right? In law. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> which, oh, I'm glad, right. always glad yeah. to hear about that. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, you, you brought up a couple interesting things, and, and both of you kind of mentioned, I, I don't know if it's a lack of interest or a, a lack of ability 
to find information. Mm. Maybe, maybe is that you, you understand what I'm saying? I so mean, actually, that that can be kind of related to what Uncle has brought today, right? What is this? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad you brought. I, I'm a. Uh, this is something crude that I've made you know, in the last couple of days, but correct me or expand on it is uh, the really the keeper of the flame, uh, Kahiku, uh, the great storytellers. Uh, oh, well, uh, well, you were telling me, Uncle, that you know, in, you would set this up, I guess. Yeah. And and the, the family would sit around it, right? Right. Yeah. The, the the great knowledge people that we have that pass down information. The keeper of the flame were the young generation that were, were sitting behind them. Because during the evening, all the kupuna would gather around, yeah. the elders, you know. The, and and they what, would, what, what is this? And, and they would tell stories. And the younger generation, their job was to keep the kukui knot flame lit. Right. That's all their, their job was. They'd be on the outskirts of the, of the circle of the gathering. And there, there was an area where they could get into the circle. So that they can pass and, and don't and disturb. This, this, this is, is actually is that, is that well. They they had numerous ones uh, because they had to keep the, uh, the light. Uh, so they were the keeper of the flames. But what what was so significant about this is, being in the background, they were able to learn yeah. generations and generations and generations of knowledge that was being discussed around. And, and them. that kind of stopped at some point. And and, and this it did. And you know, and Uncle brings up a great uh, th this whole. Um, art piece that he's created and not only has a functional value but it if you liken the kukui to um, and how it burns kukui nut is always um, related to insight knowledge mm -hmm. because of the uh, the flame that it burns and it has many different uses you know we, mm -hmm. we you get the oil f uh, to burn of course you use the nut you shave it roast it shave it down for inamona mm -hmm. which I'm sure we all know and then but that that's that light that is lit is very uh, significant to how knowledge is passed down. So if the light goes out, if the younger generation doesn't take care of it, the light goes out, that can be very significant and kind of analogous to somebody's genealogy or the knowledge of that, that line kind of dying off. And make, makes the kind of the break that right shows you know Manny had a hard time nobody nobody knew about it or no nobody knew the history of the right. family okay right. but uh, are, are they interested are, are Native I, Hawaiians interested think, today Carl? I think they are I think they are because ever since the 1970s you know when the mm -hmm. Renaissance came up Renaissance came about there's been just a strong pull for people to really go back to uh, Native Hawaiians especially to go back to who they were that self-identifying um, character has been so important and strong in defining not only who we are as people, but where we want to go, where we, where we want to take this Hawaiian movement, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, it starts with passing on the knowledge. This flame can be relit, similar to how the hokulea mm -hmm. and the, the voyaging tec uh, techniques of Nainoa, mm -hmm. you know, it can be relit. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like yeah. that analogy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's so important. But get to see, like, I'm Portuguese. So how did I first get involved in genealogy? Well, it, it came suddenly on the Internet. One day, maybe about 10 years ago, I was typing in mottos, genealogy mottos. Right. And up pops on the screen, according to the Catholic Church of Spain, mottos is a Sephardic Jew name, Jewish name. So I almost fell off the chair. I, <laughs> I had no idea that it was a Jewish surname. So I don't think my father, my grandfather, you know, they, they knew about it. So that kind of set me off. Wow, I mean, I might be Jewish in my ancestral... Uh, Welcome to the club, my friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and an ex exclusive club. <laughs> so that got me interested, and, and it kind of made me think, wow, maybe that's always why I think like this, why I reason like this. So it, it kind of started me off. With in, in that direction of genealogy. And Kali, is this what uh, maybe the new flame is? This uh, the internet or these exactly. documents and stuff? And what what is what is Oha You can say the internet there? is kind of like the fuel for you. Still need the spark. So um, in a lot of ways, as I mentioned earlier, uh, documents, right. uh, newspapers especially. A lot of people don't know the value of newspapers. I mean, and specifically with the Hawaiian language newspapers that I've been working very closely with, mm. these ones, um, these newspapers run from about 1834 to about 1938, 42. 
But as opposed to um, newspapers as we know them now, these Hawaiian newspapers were popula populated by the community. So in a sense, it was the first form of social media, mm. first form of Facebook. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Because you had people writing in on all different things from uh, celebrating somebody's birth, to um, three different accounts or four different accounts of a certain event. Mm -hmm. So they're cross collaborate, uh, kind of verifying each other's stories. To so even genealogies, some people would write um, long genealogies in there when somebody has passed. Oh. You know, that, get, that reminds me of, uh, uh, I don't know if you remember Don Ho's statement when he, when he first met, saw his Tahitian wife, he, he's walking through the kitchen and he saw this young Tahitian girl washing dishes. So, he looked at her and he went up to her and he asked her one simple question. Who you mother? Who you father? <laughs> yep. Yep. That's all he said. Who you mother? Who you father? And she said, oh, my father is Kini Popo. And my mother was a teacher. Right off the bat, he drew the connection with Kini Popo. Yep. So he said, you know what? From tomorrow on, you're not working here. You're working on my show. But he asked very simple questions because he was actually born and raised in Kaka'ako by Mother Walter in Park. But he asked an important question, which we all did at that time. Who you mother, who you father. And we still do. We yeah. still do. That's why we say, what school you went? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I was asked that last night, as a matter of fact. <laughs> let, me, let me ask, what is OHA's role in all of this now? What, what are, I mean, uh, well, we what, have you, several what you roles, brought up, really right. interesting to me. We have several roles. So um, one of the things that we, we actually have um, a number of resources that we, we've been working on creating as cutting-edge electronics. So it's a Papakilo database is number one. That's kind of like our, our big baby that we have. That is a collection of different databases that we've been able to partner with Bishop Museum, the State Archives, uh, Kauai Historical Society, um, the University of Hawaii, and just make all of these connections to databases that normally would not be available unless you physically walk into the, the brick and mortar structure that they're housed. So that's one of the things we do. Um, that's where the newspapers are. We've been able to tie in with um, Ulukau, which is a great electronic Hawaiian electronic library located in Hilo. And they have, um, they have genealogy documents, such as birth, marriage, and death certificates, and so on and so forth. Um, we also have our Kipuka database, which is more land-based. And for people that work a lot better with viewing things on a map and finding it, then they use that um, to tie into the land, the Mahele records, the, mm -hmm. the land title stuff. And then what we did was we kind of put them all under a house called Hale Noelo. Now, Hale Noelo. Hale Noelo. Now, ha uh, Hale, of course, means house, but Noelo means to seek or to search. Mm -hmm. And so within this, this physical structure, we identified the things that people were kind of looking for the most, you know, the date or the, what they needed. They needed um, to be taught how to research their genealogies. They needed a place to access the genealogies. And at, at last, they, they needed to be able to come in and record their genealogies. So we kind of coupled all those different things to be a one-stop shop for not only genealogy, but research in general. Hmm. So you can have access to free access to Ancestry.com. Uh, we'll provide genealogy technical assistance where we teach you how to research your, your genealogies. You can actually come in and record an oral history like we're probably going to do with Uncle Manny. And then you can, um, just a number of things. We, you can bring in something, like Uncle Manny brought in a very beautiful um, picture frame, a bunch of pictures of your ohana. Yeah. So we yeah. could take that and actually digitize, digitize that. It. Are we able to yeah. put that on the screen? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, well, that's on my Portuguese side. But yeah. since we're, you're on the, okay. I, I have uh, some uh, gene genealogy records of my wife's side. Okay. But I noticed after five generations, it only goes to one name. So right. how would we get access? Well, hold on, guys. We're, we're, oh, we're, we're just well, going to That focus. right there now is, the, uh, is a 1926 Portuguese festa in Kaka'ako. And uh, back in 1883, then it was the first Portuguese arrived. But they had no, no records prior to that. So they created this festa that they brought from Portugal and the Azores. And every year, for about six weeks, seven weeks, they would get together at Holy Ghosts, what they call in Kualo, Kalihi, uh, Punchbowl, and all the Portuguese people, about a thousand. I remember as a young boy back in the 50s, everybody would get together, would sit down, and say, oh, this your cousin, this your auntie, this your uncle. And you had no idea who these people were. 
So then you would sit down and you, you would talk. So right. first thing I would do, Uncle, is I would you know help you digitize this so that it's because you have it in a laminated thing that's, mm -hmm. you know. And I had more, I have more pictures like this. So we would want you to be able to digitize it. We uh -huh. wouldn't take a copy for ourselves, but we'd kind of teach you how to, you know, be able to pass this information on throughout your family. The second thing we would do is I would take you to the Hawaiian newspapers and say, okay, let's look up 1926, you know, find out whatever month and see if there were any stories written about the Portuguese festa. Mm. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to take a break right now. Okay. And then I want to come back and ask what the spark is. Kali, yeah. I want you to tell me what the spark is to get okay. this thing going. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So thank you. We'll take, take a short break right okay. now. Okay. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party plan the snacks, even plan to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I have a story, and I don't know where to start. I feel alone in a crowd. I can't sleep. I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know who I am anymore. I still have nightmares. I can't live like this anymore. I'm really not so good. But are you ready to listen? Aloha. We are back. My name is Mark Schklav, host of Law Across the Sea, and today we are talking about Hawaiian genealogy and, and resources of Oha and how to maybe trace your roots. I'm here with Kali Hannes, Manny Matos. Gentlemen, good to see you again after our break. <laughs> yeah, okay. thank you. Now, Kali. Yes. We have here maybe an early form of uh, knowledge, our way to pass knowledge, and you were talking about that. Right. You were talking about the spark. Right. How do we get the spark and what does that mean? So, you know, we were talking about how potentially the spark can go out, you know, and what it takes to reignite the spark can, is, is a number of different things. It all depends on the individual situation. Um, but in this case, we're talking about the spark as that, that uh, urge, that, that, uh, that desire to reconnect, right? Yeah, yeah. So it can be as simple as what shall I name my baby's name? You know, mm. I, I want to do put Great. put a family name on there. Yeah. Um, another thing would be uh, one of the big things uh, legal wise is uh, Kuleana tax exemption. You know, if you have if you're a descendant of the original land claimant on Kuleana land, mm -hmm. you can receive a, a significant tax break on on your property taxes. And we've all read the news lately about some things that happen on other islands too. Right. Right. That may have an effect. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. and and uh, the list goes on and on whether or not you know you qualify for Hawaiian homelands or if you want to get your child or if you want to um, your grandchild into Kumemea schools. Mm. You know, there's all these processes that, or different different motivations that can reignite this spark to be reconnected to your genealogy. Okay, yeah. now M Manny brought some. Yeah, two things I I notice, uh, and maybe I can uh, elaborate on is. I notice on my wife's grandmother's aspect of it, they would repeatedly name their children after their ancestors. Right. I, it, it was it, it was it looked like it was a cultural thing. They, they would perpetuate that name, yeah. the, the, those names from their ancestors, which would keep their genealogy right. easy to to follow. Yeah. Right. Because if you go back five six generations, there's only one name. In the Portuguese culture, the women. When they would marry the man, the husband, their maiden name would become their middle name. Say, like my grandmother was Philomena Rocha Matos. Rocha was her maiden name. So that's how the Portuguese, Kept in track. a very simple way, would keep the woman's genealogy in line with the man. But it, you know, if, if you look at this, if if you go back so many generations, there's only one name. So how do you? <laughs> I mean, that, and that's why one of the reasons why names are repeated or names are added on. So uh -huh. if you take a an Ali'i name like uh, uh, Liloa, mm -hmm. 
and then his son Umi Ali Loa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just tying in those different connections as each generation goes, whether you add a little bit to it or you subtract, it, it all goes back to just knowing where you come from. And Manny brings his wife in. How, how, do, you how do you deal with yeah, that? Yeah, she's how, totally how do you, how do you help? Uh, lost in a sense of so how does she... So what we would do is, so Uncle Manny, you have this, this, all this information out on this paper, yeah, and it, it's great. So what we would do is we take the, the most recent name, Mm -hmm. And then we'd like enter it into Ancestry.com or, or just even sometimes a simple Google search hmm. will reveal um, so much information. Uh, there's a great free website called um, findmygrave.com mm -hmm. and it helps to tie in people because it has pictures of all these different headstones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that you know you may be looking at a death certificate which may be handwritten, it's so easy to, to mis, uh, misread what, what's written over there. So sometimes you get a death certificate that's different than, than, than the headstone, you know, two different dates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that, that's when it gets exciting, but your work is really yeah, yeah. It, getting it, to start. It becomes more intriguing. You know, it, the more I look at it, the more I don't understand. So the, <laughs> more, the more supporting documents you can get yeah. to verify all of this stuff, because sometimes, you know, you get, oh, this is so-and-so's son, but he actually was born from, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, sister yeah, yeah, and yeah. raised by the uncle and so So how do so you forth. disseminate that information? That's, that's the pop problem that I think a lot of people would get. Yeah, and, and that's one of the, you know, things that Hawaiians sometimes didn't talk about as much. You know, it's just like yeah. everybody knows, but they don't. Where did that concept come from? Don't say nothing. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about one of my, uh, my wife's aunties. She's the oldest. She doesn't want to talk about the past yeah. at all. She doesn't. Where did this concept come from? Where did this mentality come from? It was just uh, one of those things where you just open your eyes, you watch, and you shut your mouth. That, that's was it you, always that's, like that? Yeah, well, that's, that's one of the ways that we learned, yeah. You just listen? Yeah. You open up your ears, you open up your eyes, and you watch. And you let the older people talk and you listen? Yes. But, and we've lost that a, a lot of times. That's what I was going to say. So there, there here appears to be like a cutoff at some point. Oh, yeah. That, that maybe you're starting now at, at OHA to regenerate or light the spark again. Well, I think and, what and we're trying to do is uh, reconnect people to credible information. Okay. And, and that's, you know, once the Internet came out and people started, because I'm, I'm very happy to say I, I went through all of high school without the Internet and email and mm -hmm. any of that. And so I learned a little bit differently. I, I, I'm also a musician, so when I learn how to do songs, I go seek out, go out to the composer, and I talk story with the composer, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and get their blessing on how to do the song and so on and so forth. Once the internet came out, there was a, the world just got a lot noisier and filled with things that yeah. it provided a platform for both credible and non-credible sources of information. You know, you said something very interesting. <coughs> Before we started to do the genealogy uh, with, with, with the family, I wanted to do the proper protocol. Yes. So I, I talked to Olohi Mitchell Eli. I said, mm -hmm. Olohi, what's the protocol to regenerate or start the genea genealogical with, with, the, with the family? He says, go to the oldest living male yeah. and ask permission. Yeah. So we, we went to, his name is Hubert Bradley. He's the oldest male. He's 85. And couple of his nieces and my wife, they went down and they simply asked him, Uncle, do we have your permission to regenerate our the right. ge genealogical research? Mm -hmm. uh, because one of the purposes of this, it brings the mana back into the family. Well, it, it regenerates or you, you explain that a lot better. So than I know. the reason why you do that is because that eldest living a person of the male, family it has to be the male according to has the Mitchell. closest connection to everything else prior you know so you get that blessing and um, we're, we're very spiritual people Hawaiians are you know and things happen for a reason so you can see that in the different uh, forms of Almakua you know mm -hmm, that, that mm -hmm. we talked about a little bit earlier yeah. and so just getting that blessing kind of releases um, and provides it opens up the floodgates in, in a way Question on that too. As, as far as Native Hawaiian practices, uh, maybe people have become Christians. They become Catholic. They become uh, Christianite. They they feel uh, they shouldn't be involved in Native Hawaiian practices where they be, be deal with entities. This and uh, I, I my wife's grandmother was able to 
blend those two together because right? there's a story right. that uh, she was having some problem with, with her children. So they all met and she told one of her children to bring a pig head. Okay. And, but she being a devout Catholic right. was able to bridge that gap. Explain so, so, that to so me. Can, can we do that? Can we, <laughs> can we mix these cultures? And, and I, I think you know everybody has their own situation. Some families choose to either go one way or another. I, I, I can't speak to any definitive what is the best way that works? It's going to work. A pig head may have worked in that sense, <laughs> mm -hmm. or something because else. Because it, it represents a, a demigod in a, in a sense. It, right, yeah. right, right. And that might have been the the whatever message that she wanted yeah, to yeah, send at yeah. that time. Well, some like if if that were my family, we would not have a pig head because that's not how we grew up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So we would do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it depends on the. On the family and this, and that leads that that leads to another very uh, good um, Hawaiian saying, "Aole pau kaike halau ho'okahi," which means not all knowledge is taught from one school. Oh, mm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, you know, you you mentioned uh, Hawaiian language papers, yeah. and my question is, I just came over with Captain Cook. Okay. Okay. I don't understand right. Hawaiian language. Right. Do I have to? know the Hawaiian language. How is OHA going to bridge that? So it, it's a long process because we're, we're talking about over fif, about 58,000 pages Oof. of Hawaiian newspapers. Newspaper. Um, and so what we're doing is it's all about building collaborations within the community, similar to kind of building, collabor um, building connections with your ohana. You know, we're working with University of Hawaii. We're working with Bishop Museum. We're starting to work with other volunteering uh, entities, schools, and so on and so forth, to not only make sure that the um, what is digitized is correct, mm. because there is no hundred percent way to OCR or provide optical character recognition on the images that are provided, uh, which makes the newspaper searchable. But in addition to that, pr to provide translation as well, it's a slow process, but we're starting that. And you know, it's sort of like uh, you're kind of like a detective in a way. It sounds yeah. to me. Okay, now we are at the end of our program. I'd like Kali yes. to give us some more words of, of wisdom, advice, or what what can people do that would like to get a hold of you or Oha or one of your uh, right. uh, groups to learn more about their own backgrounds. You know, what 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 would you tell them? Well, I, I would say first, you know, write out a simple family tree. Say, start with yourself, say, okay, this is where I am. Then say, list your siblings and then your, your parents. And just try and go as far back as you can. And something is, like I said earlier, something as simple as a Google search mm -hmm. can reveal so much. And after you've done some detective work on your own, you know, come in and see us. Um, we are, you can do a search on Hale Noelo or Papa Kilo database and um, come in and see us, and we can, we can definitely help make sure you're on the right path. And o OHA's goal, as I understand it, is to empower Hawaiians. And, and, we have and many different them. goals, and one of them is reconnecting, empowering Hawaiians by reconnecting them with their genealogies. Mm -hmm. And just knowing who you are as a person, a mm -hmm. lot, of, a lot yeah. of that got lost in the past. Yeah, it did. And even with our Portuguese culture, same thing. You know, uh, but we have venues, we, we can go to, the, they have Portuguese cultural clubs where you can inquire because uh, a lot of the Portuguese community, they really don't realize how important it is for them. Gentlemen, we've got to relight the flame here yeah. and I think we're doing it. So thank you both thank for you being Mark. here. Aloha. Thank, Aloha. thank you, Uncle Man. Thank you, my friend.